So where last we left things in After Effects, I would composited this stop sign, right? So the stop sign is a Photoshop document, and I composited that over the top of a shaky uh, handheld camera. And then we mapped the motion of the camera onto the stop sign, so now when I play it, it, um, it, it follows along, right? So that's looking pretty good. So let's talk about another couple of adjustments we could make, and I'm really just going to scratch the surface here, and this is something that I want you to explore. Uh, so one thing that we were noticing is that the sound of our um, of the wind on my camera was kind of distracting. So to get access to that, I just drop down streetsigns.mov, go down to audio, and then I can pull those decibels down. So right here you can hear it. You might not be able to hear it coming off my computer, uh, but this is where we would adjust our audio so that it's not quite so distracting. I might want to leave a little bit in because that adds to kind of the realism of the shot. So that's one thing you might want to do is mess around with the audio. Another thing we can do is to play with the color. So I did, if I don't mind saying so myself, but I, I did prepare this thing pretty well because I'm taking pictures in sunlight. So if you're trying to composite a sunlight image with a sunlight image, that's usually pretty easy to do, especially because there's no shadows being cast on the face of the stop sign. But it does look a little bit bright. So one way we can get in there and do some color matching is to go to Effects and Presets, and I'm going to search for the word Tint. And so Tint will pop up here under Color Correction, and then I can drag that little module up onto the stop sign itself, and that'll pop up here on the left-hand side. So initially the amount to Tint is going to be 100%, and um, at the moment we're mapping black to absolute black and white to absolute white. So what I'll do instead of absolute black is I'll pick the color dropper here, and then I'll pick a black within the image, right? And so you can see the change shift a little bit because nothing is absolutely true black in this video. And then I'll pick the white. Oops, instead of picking the color with the color picker, I'll use the uh, eyedropper here, and I'll pick a white point in our image. And then I can move the tint amount up and down so that this thing gets a little bit more dull. So before it was, you know, ultra bright like that, which looks a, a little bit fake. And so now if I pull this down slightly, it'll work a little better. So the changes I'm making here will be more apparent um, in the case when you're capturing video, say, inside. So if you have incandescent lights, they might be very yellow, whereas LED lights might be yellow or kind of a cooler blue or something like that. So, so tint is going to help you try to make those adjustments. And you can see if I, I turn off the search here, there's just an absolute monster list of different kinds of effects we can play with. And some of them get a lot weirder in terms of distortion, uh, blurring, uh, stylization, text, and things like that. So I'll, I'll let you search through that on your own time. And if you ever have something that you don't want to have anymore, you just click it once and right click and cut and you can get rid of your, um, your effects that way. Okay, so let's say that we, uh, we like how our video looks. I play it. I find that the sound's not too loud. Um, if I want to trim off the edge, you know, so sometimes you see if I scroll back and forth down here, I can look at my entire video clip and um, everything looks really even. But sometimes when you're playing around, some of these layers will get artificially long and you may want to drag in the side right here if you just want to export, say, a portion of your video. Uh, but in, all, in our case, we're just going to push the whole thing out. So to do that, I'll go up to File. You want to make sure to save, too, uh, before you move on. Uh, let's see here. So I'm just going to save this as sample.aep. So we'll save that before we export. Export tends to be uh, computationally uh, demanding, and so this would be the time for After Effects to quit on you, and you don't want to make sure, or you, know, you want to make sure not to get your, uh, your file deleted. So I'll go to File, and then down to Export. And the two options we have, we can go straight out to the render queue, which is internal to After Effects, and I find a little bit harder to control. I like working with the Adobe Media Encoder queue. The only downside is that it takes a little bit longer to set up, so it's actually a separate program. So we'll let that thing load up here. And once the Media Encoder queue opens, uh, the program is still working, even though I don't see the spinning beach ball. So we'll wait for another moment. And then soon enough, we'll see our video populate into this window. There it is. Okay, so by default, you should have the same settings I do, but you'll want to make sure to work in H.264, so that's the compression algorithm we're using, uh, and, and this is going to result in an MP4. And you also want to make sure that MP4 is landing in the place where you want it. So I can just double check and make sure it's in the same folder I've been working with. Um, and I believe it was.
is. Okay, so this is going to be called street sign.np4. And I might say right here, just because I think I've exported other ones with a very similar name. That's within the isolation folder. Okay, so even after I hit OK, nothing is going to happen. I still have to hit play. Now, if you want to, you can really dig in here and you can start to mess around with um, uh, the specific defaults that are being used. If you happen to know some stuff about video compression, uh, these are some changes you can make. But I think in terms of the purposes of this class, uh, we'll just work at, uh, at full quality and, uh, and the MP4. But you know, if I dig down into here, I could, for example, change around the, uh, the resolution of the screen uh, by tapping on some of this stuff there. I uncheck that, I can change the video size. I can change the audio compressor. There's all sorts of um, options in here if you know what you're doing. But for right now, I'll hit cancel, and then I'll just hit play. Again, depending on the you know, uh, processing speed of your computer, this may take a little while, uh, but I've, I'm only doing about second, seven seconds of video or something, so it shouldn't be too bad at all. And then while it's doing that, I'm going to navigate to the folder where the video is gonna come out. And I believe that was in videos, isolation, and we can see it here, it's not fully generated yet. There it goes. And now we can play out that video. It's looking pretty good. So if I take a look at the result, I can see very subtly, sometimes the sign slides around just slightly um, off kilter on the post. That's something that we could go back and mess with. We could mess with the color and so forth. But that gives us a pretty satisfying little demo of how compositing and color matching works. So the last step, because we don't have that much uh, storage space in, um, in discussions on Canvas, would be to upload this to a service like YouTube or Vimeo or something like that. And then you could just embed that video in our discussion uh, to turn it in.